the goals of this video, um, look, if you're here to learn how to solve uh, a systems of equation, this is the wrong video. You need to go back and look at my substitution method, uh, elimination method videos, and also uh, graphing uh, method. This is designed to simply help you learn how to construct two equations. The equations are not given to you. It'll be a story problem setting. I want to give you a routine of how to go about uh, defining your variables and constructing your equations. And then last, I want to make sure that after you get an answer, you can tell if it's correct or not. So let's take a look at this one right here. This is the easiest type of um, problem that I could come up with for a system of equations. The sum of two numbers is 150 and their difference is 30. What are the two numbers? The first thing you need to do when you come across these systems of equations is come up with defining your variables. Okay, and so this is going to be red here on every single page that we do, so that way you'll know this is the first thing we need to do. Um, X is an unknown number, Y is an unknown number, but I've just decided that I want this X to represent the first number in this situation, and Y is going to represent the second number in the situation. So if I can find out what X is, and I can find out what Y is, I'll know what the two numbers are for this one. Next, we need to build two equations to represent this situation. So literally, if you just read the problem, you will get enough clues to be able to build the equation. Sometimes they're difficult, sometimes they're very easy like this. I know the, that the word sum means that I'm adding two numbers together, or it's the answer to an addition problem. So if I was to add x and y together, the sum should be 150. Now the difference, that's talking about if I subtracted the two numbers. So if I subtracted x and y, then I know that the difference between those two numbers should be 30. And then at this point, we just go through and we solve. We have two equations, so that's the system of equations. And now I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to just let you be able to see the work that I did to solve this, and then we'll take a look at the answer to see if it makes sense. So there you go. I used the elimination method. Uh, I determined that x was 90, and then I plugged uh, 90 back in for x into the top equation, this one right here, and was able to determine that y is 60. So um, we've constructed the equation. We've been able to define the variables, but how do we know if we're right? Well, take both of these in. x was 90, so that's 90. y was 60. 90 plus 60 equals 150. That's a true statement. And 90 minus 60 is 30. So if it makes both of your equations true, it's correct. The other thing is that I, before you start to solve, you always want to ask yourself if these equations actually make sense to the situation. The sum was talking about two numbers being added together. Well, I defined my two numbers, and I've added them together, and it does equal 150. So uh, it tells the exact story that the, the story problem was giving us. And then here, the difference was talking about subtraction of the two numbers. So if I subtracted x and y, which represented the two numbers, the difference was 30, and there it is, it's 30. So I, I know that my equations are good, and when I plugged in my answers, it still made both of my equations true, so I have to have the correct answer. Let's take a look at a slightly different scenario. Um, it's almost a carbon copy to it, but I just wanted to get you a little bit of practice. You might want to pause the video and then do it yourself. If uh, you're just watching, here we go. Um, I need to find two numbers. X will be my first number. Y will be my second number. So I've defined my variables. If I can find these two, I've found my answers. Let's build two equations. The sum refers to plus, so if I added x and y together, it should be 121. So x plus y equals 121. The difference, well, if I subtracted them, so let me put a subtraction sign there, x minus y should give me 37. So let's go solve it and see if we can get the right answer. And there we go, use elimination method again. I have to determine that x was 79. And then I just uh, plugged 79 into this top equation and was able to solve for y. Uh, my answers are 79 to 42. If you take just a moment, it'll keep you from making a lot of mistakes. 79 plus 42 is 121, and 79 minus 42 really is 37. Let's do that one more time. Well, actually, I tell you what. Let's, instead of doing another one of those, let's do a little bit more difficult one. Miss Sudbury bought pencils and stickers for a first grade class on two different days. 
the pencils and stickers cost the same time, cost the same each time she went to the store. How much does she pay for each pencil? And then this table is given to us. You can see that on Tuesday, she purchased 30 pencils and 40 stickers, and the total cost was $47.50. On Saturday, she purchased 60 pencils, five stickers, and the total cost is $20 exactly. Let's go to find our variables. Um, what do we want? I, I don't want to know the number of pencils because that's been given to us. It's how much does she pay for each pencil? So P will represent the cost of one pencil. Um, S, we, we could find out, we need to find the cost for, for stickers, not um, for the answer to this problem, but to help us solve this problem. I'm going to use the letter I. I could use S, but when I write an S, it kind of looks like a five. See what I'm saying? So uh, I don't want to do that. Also, I, I found that if I use the letter T, a lot of times I have to write it in a special way like this. So that way I don't think it's a plus sign. So I, I'm just going straight to I um, because I know I can write an I and I won't confuse it with a plus sign or with a 5. So here's my two variables. I will be the cost of one sticker. P will be the cost of one pencil. We need to build two equations now to represent this scenario. Um, the chart works in very handy. Uh, it, it, it's just nice to let us be able to look at it and kind of get our bearings. She bought 30 pencils, but I don't know how much one pencil cost. I do know this, though. If P is the cost of one pencil, if I times it by the number of pencils she bought, I know how much she paid for pencils. So let's just say each pencil cost $1. 30 times 1 would mean $30. If a sticker cost a dollar, 40 stickers times one dollar for each sticker would mean it's forty dollars, and then the total would have been seventy bucks. You know, thirty dollars for pencils, forty dollars for stickers, add them together, and it would be seventy. So that's the basic idea. Unfortunately, I have no idea what the cost is. But when you look at this table, it's very handy because it almost builds the equation for you. If I add up the cost of my pencils with the cost of my stickers, it gives me the total. And then that lets us be able to build the second equation perfectly. It's the same thing again. Now, I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to go solve, and we'll take a look at the cost to see if it's correct. There we go. Um, each pencil. Sorry, got it interrupted. Each pencil cost 25 cents, and I went ahead and solved also, and I determined that each sticker cost one dollar. And uh, if you plug that into um, both equations, it makes both of them true. So let's take a look at another situation. Um, it's relatively the same. Prices for the movie are six dollars and fifty cents for children and nine dollars for adults. The total amount of ticket sales is one thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and fifty cents. There are 152 tickets sold. How many adults and children buy tickets? Define your variables. Um, I like using um, letters that represent what we're rep you know, coming up in the, the problem. A equals the number of adults who bought tickets um, or bought a ticket. And C equals the number of children who bought tickets. And uh, now we need to look through here and mine for information. Um, I'm also going to do this. I'm going to put nine bucks right here over the adults and I'm going to put six dollars and fifty cents just so that way I know that that's how much each uh, child or each adult purchased or spent for their ticket. Let's put two equations to represent it. Um, see where it says 152 tickets sold? If I add up all the adults and all the children it should equal 152. So that's kind of the, the easier one. Um, I could slide this plus sign over there, but I'm trying to, to stack it neatly on top of the second equation, and I know it's coming. The other one, um, we've got this money. Well, if I took $6.50 and times it by the number of children, or C, or 650C, so I could put 6.5C or 6.50C times C, and then added it to $9 times the number of adults who bought a ticket, I would get $1,215.50. And so uh, there you have it. That's the uh, systems of equation. Let's pause and solve for it. And uh, you'll notice that I had to multiply the top equation by negative 9 
to make that negative 9a and then the rest of the equation kind of followed suit. Um, I was able to uh, add the two equations together, find out that children uh, were 61, plug that into the top equation. The C became a 61. I could subtract it from both sides, and quickly I discovered we had 91 adults. I would say this is kind of uh, the typical system of equation problem. It would be more along this level of difficulty, building two equations, um, having to probably multiply one of them at least to be able to solve. Um, but this would be more of a, a typical system of equation story problem. This time I'm not going to show you the work of, of how I solved it because, again, that's not my main goal. Let's just talk about defining the variables. Kayla gets paid $10 for raking leaves. So you know what I do? I put R equals the number of yards she raked um, and $15 for mowing the lawn of each of the neighbors. So M equals the number of lawn yards that she mowed. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and take the time to say, you know what? The raking was 10 bucks for each yard and this one was $15 for each yard. It's just a way of keeping uh, this going together. Uh, all the notes kind of flow through there and it's, it's kind of like a shorthand for me. Um, if we know that um, this year she mowed the lawns 10 times more than she raked leaves, that's going to be important. And in total, she made $800 for doing both raking and mowing the yards. How many times did she rake the leaves? So we want to find out R. If we can find R, we're done. Um, 10 times um, $10, you know, um, $10 for every yard she rakes. R is the number of yards she rakes. We're going to add that on to $15 times the number of yards that she mowed. And if we add all of her earnings together, it should equal $800. That's the, the easier one. This time, though, we've got to take a little bit of time to look at this next sentence. This year, she mowed the lawns 10 times more than she raked. So did she uh, mow more lawn yards, or did she rake more yards. Which one did she do? She definitely mowed. She did this 10 times more than that. So let's get this idea of M equals R. And we know they're not equal. I know that she mowed 10 times more often than she raked. She mowed 10 times more often. So if I could multiply my uh, number of times raking by 10, it would equal the number of times that she mowed the yards. And that's the reasoning um, that you have to come across there. Um, because the raking is a smaller number, I need to multiply it by 10 to have it equal uh, the number of times that she mowed. And so now let's pause it. If you go solve the system of equations, you'll discover that R equals 5 and M equals 50. And uh, that means that she raked the least five times. I've got that written out in sentence form. Um, 5 times 10 equals 50. 5 times uh, 10 is 50. Also, uh, 50 times 15 is 750, and 750 plus 50 equals 800. So it makes both of the equations true. Um, if you had somehow set it up and, and said 10m equals r, you're not going to get uh, a solution that makes both of the equations true. But again, um, I knew that the amount of yards she had mowed was 10 times more than the amount she had raked. So I needed to multiply this by 10 to make it equal to this number over here. So again, think of it like this. If we had known the numbers, what do I have to multiply this 5 by to make it equal to 50? Well, you have to make it multiplied by 5, or excuse me, by 10. Um, let's take a look at one more problem, and then we'll shut it down. A farmer sells a dozen eggs at the market for $1.50 and one of his bags of grain for $6. He's sold three times as many bags of grain as he has dozens of eggs. By the end of the day, he has made $351 worth of sales. How many bags of grain did he sell? Well, first off, here's my variables. E will equal the number of dozen eggs sold. G, I'm going to... Uh, have it equal the number of bags of grain sold. I know that these are a buck fifty for each dozen, and I know that this is six dollars. So let's go and put them together. A dollar fifty for each dozen, uh, six dollars for each bag. If I do the multiplication, I can know how many, uh, how much money I made off of the eggs and how much I made off of the grains. If I add it together at the end of the day, um, he should have three hundred fifty-one dollars. 
Now comes the tricky part, this uh, second sentence. He sold three times as many bags of grain as he had eggs. So he sold a lot more bags of grain than he did eggs. So let's just get an E and a G up here. Which one's bigger? This is bigger. So I'm going to have to take the smaller number and multiply it by something to make it equal to this bigger one. How many more times of, did he sell of grain? He sold it three times as many bags of grain. So if I multiplied this side by three, it would make these two equal, and there's your equation. Three times the number of uh, dozens of eggs equals the number of grains of uh, bags of grain that he sold. And now if you would just go solve it, you can find it. After solving this uh, SOE, we find out that he sold 54 bags of grain. I went ahead and took the time of uh, plugging them into both of the equations. Uh, 3 times 18 is 54. Um, if you plug in 18 for the E here and 54 for the G here, do the multiplication and add it up, it does equal 351. So it makes both of the equations true. I I want to also take just another moment here to mention on the solving process. This is not your typical um, setup for an equation. It is different. This lends itself to being able to use substitution. I know that this G could be replaced with 3E because G equals 3E, and that makes it a lot easier. Um, and so you, you get 19.50E equals 351. I could divide both sides by 19. 0.5 or 19.50, and then that lets me know that E equals 18, and I can just go back and, and plug it in to get what G is. So um, hang in there. Um, this this style right here of, of a puzzle um, for the second equation is, is something that comes up there quite a bit. Um, most of the time, though, uh, I would say examples like the movie uh, ticket problem and uh, Miss Sudbury and, and pencils and stickers that that type of setup um, where the the two equations are, are very similar to each other um, happens a little bit more often. However, you need to be able to to do the ones like Kayla and the yard work and and the farmers selling the eggs and bags of grain. Um, this just is trying to let you know that you need to go through and define your variables. Sometimes you get a little mixed up about which one's representing what, especially if you use an X or a Y. Or uh, you might suddenly forget that uh, E is representing the number of eggs sold, and you might think that E was like $18 for one dozen. You might think this is money. But if you took the time to say, no, this is just the number of a dozen of eggs I sold, then I know that, hey, I, I sold 18 dozen eggs, and I know that I sold 54 bags of grain. And so define your variables, set it up, and then solve it any way that you can, uh, whether that be substitution, uh, elimination, graphing, whatever it takes. Um, so good luck. Uh, it's a tough uh, subject to learn, and just keep practicing.